Okay, gang. So today what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the, de the derivative of the natural exponential function e to the x. <clears throat> and then after we do that, we will generalize to all exponential functions. But just to remind you now, you know how to find derivatives of constants, polynomial functions, rational functions, right? You know all the rules for derivatives, the constant rule, the product rule, quotient rule, and so on, okay? So, but you've been applying those rules to constants, polynomials, rational functions. But what about the exponential functions, right? And then once we do this, we'll see how this kind of opens up the door for more complicated and more interesting functions later on, especially when you get to calculus three and calculus four. Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll appeal to the old definition. Remember the definition, the limit definition for the derivative. Now, what you'll find is, right, if we, have, if we go back to our, all that work we did with uh, studying the limits of functions, right, <clears throat> we know that we can, by and large, we can find the limit of, of an expression by direct substitution, as long as that number you substitute is in the domain of the overall expression. If you try that here, in other words, replace every h with the number zero, what you'll find, gang, is that you're going to get the expression zero divided by zero. You may recall that's called an indeterminate form. That doesn't mean that the limit doesn't exist. That just means that you have to do further investigation. Okay, so I'm going to continue on here with a little bit of algebra. Okay, notice how I, I wrote um, this term right here, right? I use the property of exponents, e to the x plus h, to then rewrite it like this right here. Next, I factored out the common factor e to the x. Now notice, what's changing in this expression? It's the letter h, okay? h is changing. In other words, h is getting smaller, right? It's, it's approaching zero, right? So think of the values of h changing or being variable and getting smaller. e to the x doesn't have h attached to it at all, right? e to the x is kind of separate from the other expression, gang. You can treat it like a constant. You also remember from your work in Calculus 1 that we can set constants aside, okay? So I'm, I'm going to do just that. Okay, now a very quick sketch of this expression right here. I'm gonna highlight it in a different color. See this right here? I'm gonna graph that expression in order to determine the value of this limit, okay? Because if I try direct substitution again, I'm still gonna get that zero divided by zero indeterminate form, okay? So here's what a graph, and, and this, is, this is legal, right? You remember one of the first ways that we learned of uh, evaluating limits was by using graphs and tables, okay? So we're not doing anything out of the ordinary, which has probably been a while for some of us. Okay. 
Okay, so, so gang, that's what the graph of this function looks like. Okay, it's, it curves upward like this. Okay, think of the horizontal axis as being H. And as we approach zero from either side, right? Because after all, we are calculating a two-sided limit here. As you approach zero from the left or the right, the graph of the function either rises to a height of one or falls to a height of one. And so therefore we can say, okay? So what we found is that the derivative of the natural exponential function e to the x is itself, okay? The derivative of e to the x is itself. Pretty cool. <laughs> So if I wanted to find the derivative, of four e to the x, I know that I can set that constant aside by the constant multiple rule and multiply it by the derivative of e to the x itself, which is just itself, okay? Okay, now here, we're, it, it would seem that we're at a bit of an impasse, right? We know how to find the derivative of e to the x, but that's the only derivative we found. This is e to the 2x. That's a different exponential function, okay? But I'm going to appeal to a little bit of algebra, <clears throat> and I'm going to write e to the 2x as e to the x times e to the x, okay? Property of exponents. And then I'm going to use the power rule. Uh, I'm sorry, not the power rule, the product rule that says take the derivative of the first factor, which is itself, and then multiply it by the second factor plus. Now take the derivative of the second factor, which is itself, and multiply it by the first. Simplify. Okay, so the, <clears throat> excuse me, the derivative of e to the 2x is 2 times e to the 2x. Okay, well, what about e to the 3x? Well, again, it would seem that we're at a bit of an impasse, but if we, if we, approach this problem the same way we did the previous one, a little bit of algebra and then the product rule, I think we'll get it, gang. How about like this? Okay, so now I'm gonna use the product rule. So the first factor is the blue one. Okay, and the second factor is the black one. So according to the product rule, the derivative of the first factor, which by the way, we found in the previous example right here, right? The derivative of e to the 2x is two times e to the 2x. So I'm just gonna use that result. Okay, and then multiply that by the second factor plus. the second factor times the derivative of the first one, but what's the um, second factor, I'm sorry, the first factor times the derivative of the second one, but the derivative of e to the x we know is itself. Simplify. Okay. Now, hopefully you're detecting a pattern here. <laughs> Look at this, right? So the derivative, let's go back up here. The derivative of e to the x, which is all of this work here, 
is 1 e to the x. The derivative of e to the 2x is 2 e to the 2x right here. The derivative of e to the 3x is 3 e to the 3x. Care to take a guess of what we're going to do next? Yes. Tell me the derivative of e to the 4x. Come on now. No work. <laughs> good. 4e to the 4x. Okay, very good. 4e to the 4x. Hey, gang, let's generalize, okay? Let's generalize. Let's just say one time for all time, okay? The derivative of e to the kx, where k is some constant, is equal to k times e to the kx. That's worth remembering, I think, don't you? <laughs> okay. But what about derivatives to other bases? Okay. Well, let me remind you, I'm going to use a different color for this. I think that it's worth pointing this out. Let's say we call. You remember the change of base formula from algebra two and pre-calculus? Yeah, the change of base formula says we can change a logarithm of x base b like this, okay? But gang, here's the problem. We don't know how to find derivatives of logarithms. We know about logarithms, but we don't know how to find the derivatives of logarithms. So here we are kind of at an impasse, okay? We are kind of at an impasse. Now we've got to work around for that and we'll do that. Oops, let's change color back, huh? All right, now what about this? Yeah, e to the negative 7x. You know, what are we going to do about that? Yeah, we have the generalization right above, right? So this is just going to be negative 7 times e to the negative 7x. Good. How about this? What do you think? Yes, good, good. Some of you said the quotient rule, right? We can use the quotient rule. And a couple of you, I'll bet, even noticed that you could rewrite the expression this way. And use the product rule instead. Either way, again, no matter which one you decide you're going to use, you have to get the same result after you simplify. Okay, so, so don't let that trouble you. Let's make a remark. If we extend the logic with the chain rule now, we should get the following.
Okay, so that's an extension by using the chain rule. Okay, so for example, Okay, so here, notice that it's a composition of functions, right? We took a polynomial, essentially, and dropped it into the natural exponential function. Well, by the chain rule, the derivative of this exponential function is itself. Okay, times the derivative of its exponent. Okay, times the derivative of its exponent. Okay, how about this one? Yeah, good. So it'll be, it's a composition. So the derivative of this exponential function is itself times the derivative of its exponent. Derivative of the sine is the cosine. Okay, and then finally, the derivative of e to the 1 over x is itself times the derivative of the reciprocal function 1 over x, which is negative 1 over x squared. 